Hey, what's up and welcome to the shootout of Eric Dolphy's 1964 masterpiece out to launch. My name is Jason. I hope you're doing great. I am doing fantastic. Okay, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm not one to spend hundreds of dollars or even a hundred dollars on a vinyl record. Very, very rarely will I spend, say, over a hundred dollars on a record because it's just, it's the, the only way to obtain such a record is to pay that money. But usually if there are other options, I will attempt to seek out a pressing that sort of meets that happy medium between value and quality because quite frankly, those really expensive pressings are outside my budget. I would way rather go get a couple of, or three records than one really expensive one, especially if there's another option that sounds just as good or, or very close to just as good. One of the goals of this channel is to show you very acceptable alternatives to pricey records. We could easily spend outrageous sums on these things, right? And, and there's a lot of talk out there about which ones sound better than others. Must you have an original? Must you have a 45 RPM? Well, this video is going to put some of that to rest, at least for one album. <laughs> I can't maintain a sense of credibility unless I can put my money where my mouth is. I'm not someone that comes on and says, the original is always the best sounding pressing of a record, or a UHQR is the best pressing, you must go buy it, or you must go buy Music Matters 45 RPMs. I'm very much a person that tries to weigh out all the options and figure out which is gonna be the best one for the money. All right, so the goal of this channel is to inspire you to find great music at great affordable prices if possible, you know, to find quality pressings of records without breaking the bank. I have a deep love and enthusiasm for great music. And so do you. I, I love to share information and to share my experience with the albums that are near and dear to my heart and to try to figure out, is there a way to build a collection for the average person without going broke? And most of all, to help us all hopefully avoid bad pressings and to steer people toward better pressings that are, again, still affordable. Okay, there's gonna be a ton of information in this video, so I created chapters so that you can jump around, navigate to the parts of the video that are more interesting to you, and even come back and, and refresh your memory on some of the stuff I'm gonna cover today. All right, so let's meet the contestants. Again, I wanna be as transparent as possible about these pressings. I, I want to use meaningful variables when looking at how these Pressings came into the world and how they stack up against each other. First up, we have the Blue Note Classic Vinyl Series, as indicated by this little sticker. And I have a bunch of these. They're very affordable. You can find these on Amazon, generally under 30 bucks and sometimes much cheaper. They run a ton of sales. There's a lot of times where you can get these for 20 bucks or even less. And so this is a fantastic alternative for someone that's looking to build a collection quickly or just wants to get into jazz or just doesn't want to spend a ton of money and, and considering all the different compromises that we have to make, right? With 45 RPM or with original pressings, these are all cut from the original master tapes and I've had very good success with the Blue Note Classic Vinyl Series. Again, this album is gonna run you about 28 bucks. Okay, next up is the 1977 Japanese pressing, and this is the one that's been in my collection for a long time. This is the one that I've listened to and loved for years. This is part of the Immortal Masterpiece selection, which contained 20 releases of ex extremely baller albums. Cannonball Adderley's Something Else, we got Art Blakey's Monin, John Coltrane's Blue Train, Lee Morgan's Sidewinder, and, and Monin is another one that I have from the series, and it just sounds incredible. It's very, very good. This one sounds very, very good. As you well know, sometimes it's hard to imagine a record sounding better than some of the ones we have in our collection, and then you hear another one and you're like, oh, okay, I guess it is possible to sound better, but we'll see what happens. Japanese press, 1977. This will probably run you about 50, 60 bucks, even with shipping for most places around the world. All right, the third record competing in the shootout is the 1966 US pressing. This is a West Coast Liberty pressing, which means no Van Gelder stamp, no P for plastilite or ear as they call it. 
in the Dead Wax. And so this isn't necessarily an original, but I am curious to see how it differs from the other albums on this list. I mean, it's a 1966 Blue Note, so I expect it to have many of the characteristics that an early, early pressing is gonna have. A nice copy of this pressing is gonna set you back about 100 to 150 bucks. All right, and last but not least, we have the 2009 Music Matters 45 RPM double LP. And I mean, I cannot wait to hear this. This, of course, was cut from the original master tape, which by the way, all of these albums come from analog sources. So these are, this isn't like comparing apples to oranges per se, right? I mean, we are comparing all analog here. Uh, copies of this are going to set you back consistently upwards of 125 bucks, but I've seen people trying to get, you know, over $200 for these. So, and as you probably well know, any of the uh, Music Matters 45 RPMs that go out of print tend to skyrocket in price. So best to grab these if you want one when you see them at affordable prices or when you see them on the Music Matters site. And just another quick note too is it's interesting that when the LP was the media of choice, uh, this was a point of contention for a lot of bands and artists, right? I, I remember seeing a video, and I couldn't find it, I saw it a long time ago, but it was an interview with Bob Weir of The Grateful Dead, and he was talking about how he and Jerry Garcia of The Grateful Dead would compete over who was gonna get the outer groove, whose, whose songs were gonna get the outer groove, and I think they would fight over it and trade off, and. One album, Jerry would get the outer groove, and one album, Bobby would get the outer groove. It would be interesting to take a look at all of the Grateful Dead albums and just see which ones had Jerry tunes on the outer groove and which ones had Bobby, and you could just imagine them uh, duking it out in the studio as they fought over who was gonna get that outer groove. Anyway, but it's also why these 45 RPM records are so highly sought after. All right, so there are basically four big questions that I am hoping to answer with this video. One is, are there characteristics about the 1966 pressing that are superior to all the other pressings? In other words, how does a vintage record or an original record stack up to more modern records? How does a Japanese record differ from these other pressings? How well does a classic series or an affordable modern record stack up to some of these other records? And is a 45 RPM pressing better? And if it is, how much better and how is it better? You know what I mean? How detectable are these improvements? All right, so now that you know the players, let's jump into a quick montage while I do all the hard work of comparing these pressings. And of course, I'm gonna be looking for every sonic nuance I can imagine. Soundstage, stereo imaging, amplitude, distortion, all of the little ambient details that fit into a lot of jazz records, and, and I know exist on this tape because I've heard it on the Japanese press, there are a lot of little subtle and even more dramatic details that sonically are present in the mix that just make you feel more like you're there. Like these, these artists are right in front of you in 3D space. I'll be listening to the dynamics from the top end to the bottom end. Is there any harshness in any of the frequencies? Is any part of this record fatiguing to listen to? And of course, I'll be listening for that inner groove distortion, muddiness. Um, I have a checklist, all the things that I wanna listen for. Um, with room for notes. I'm gonna go over this as analytically and as detailed as possible. I'm actually very, very stoked to see what we find here. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get this party started. Oh man, this record's so good. It's so good. Um, that was hard. That was extremely difficult. That was that was way harder than I thought it was gonna be. I gotta be honest. Um, one of the things about this record, this record is extremely well recorded. It's extremely well recorded. There is a lot of things going on on this record. There's a lot of unconventional playing on this record. Rudy Van Gelder really had to do some gymnastics to get this thing recorded well and mastered well, and it's just, it's, 
it's unbelievable. Bobby Hutcherson gets very experimental on the vibes. There's, there's a part on this album where it sounds like he's hitting an anvil with a hammer and is able to pull it off without uh, you know, too much distortion or, or loss of fidelity. We have Freddie Hubbard turning in some of his most adventurous trumpet playing on this record. We have Tony Williams on drums playing polyrhythmically and just all over the drum kit and, and, and all over the frequency spectrum. Richard Davis, as you well know, is just slaying on the bass between his harmonic playing and his melodic playing. It's just, Everybody on this album, and I don't want to get too much into the music, I've already done that in another video, but everyone on this album is a leader. Everyone on this album is being completely adventurous, and I mean, it speaks for itself. But anyway, so musically, obviously, it's great, but, but in order to get that music to sound great, there is a lot of things that have to be handled perfectly so that it can sound great sonically. And of course we got Dolphy, the man himself on bass, clarinet, flute, and alto. Again, a another situation where you've got a horn playing all over the spectrum. Okay, so I did a lot of back and forth for this shootout. Um, I didn't just listen to these albums linearly, right? I mean, I was constantly picking up the, the needle and, and moving another record on. I wanted to listen for something, and so, um, but let me just take you through basically my process and what I've heard. I've got all my notes here. I started out with the classic series. So I dropped the needle on this first, and I just went through all of side one, and I was very impressed. It sounds very, very good. I mean, it sounds very, very good. Um, the one thing I noticed was as you get to track three, the last track on side one where you might expect to start to hear some intergroup distortion, I did hear a limitation in Freddie Hubbard's trumpet. There is a solo on Gazelloni where the trumpet is just not, it's just not bright enough or it's just not dynamic enough. It's a little bit, a little bit muffled especially as compared to the other instruments, um, especially compared to Dolphy. Dolphy's kind of really been driving this record and setting up the expectation of what this thing's gonna sound like. And then when Freddie comes in for that solo, it's sort of like, mm, what happened there? And so that's a place where I went directly to the 45 RPM because I wanted to see, all right, has this been corrected or, or is this an issue? Is this an issue with inner groove distortion or maybe fidelity? And when I put this record on, it was basically the same thing. So that tells me that it's probably just an issue with recording. You might not even notice it. Um, it's pretty subtle, but it's there and it's there here as well. So, I mean, since that's something that seems like it's inherent in the actual recording, that's not something that I'm going to compare because it, as I went through all of these, um, they all basically have the same thing. The only difference I would say with the 45 RPM is that it might have just been, again, you. <laughs> There's a little more fidelity there. There's a little more information there. You can hear it. You can hear that there is, uh, it's hard to describe what it is. It just feels like one generation better. And you would only notice it if you played them very close back to back, right? If you're skipping from one to the other, other than that, that is not something you're really gonna notice. All right, let me break out my notes. So yeah, the classic series, very quiet noise floor. Stereo imaging is just top notch. I mean, the soundstage is beautiful. I really love the soundstage of this album and sort of where Eric is and where Freddie is and where everybody kind of is in 3D space. Um, and then that all comes through on the classic series. It is unbelievably strong, but before I get too far into it, let me go over some of these other press pressings. So really the next one I listened to after I was kind of done going back and forth a little bit was I put on the OG, I know it's not an OG, the 66 pressing. And there are a couple things that I noticed. At, that was the moment where I started to see pros and cons, which I started to say, oh man, that's where it gets really hard to pick which one's better on these is because some sound stronger in some places and others in other places. And that's where it's gonna be very much a subjective and a personal thing. But I just wanna tell you what I heard so you can decide for yourself. I, I'm not calling these out as being really better or worse at this point. I'm just saying 
what's different. And what's different about the uh, 66 pressing is that there's not as much bottom end as you might expect. Um, you definitely get that bottom end on the 45 RPM and on the, um, the Classic Series. But there is more detail in the top end. So there's a part on Hat and Beard track one where you can hear Eric's uh, the levers on the bass clarinet as he's playing and those really come through on the 66. It's really cool. It's like the ambience comes through more, especially the ambience that's in the, the top end, which is where you're gonna probably get most ambience anyway. Um, all of that stuff came through clear on the 66 pressing. The 66 pressing sounds very, very good. It's just that when you listen to it after you've listened to something that has a little more rounded bottom end, a little more bass, um, it will sound lacking in those frequencies. Of course, that's easily fixed by, you know, cranking up the bass a little bit and giving yourself a little more of that bottom end. Um, I tried not to do that here. I really wanted to have a flat response for everything that I could just be fair about, you know, how I was comparing these. Um, what else? All right, so then I, I went through and I listened to the 45 from beginning to end. And, and again, when I say that, I'm stopping periodically and drop, dropping another pressing on. And I'm just constantly comparing, you know, something that I heard in this pressing that maybe sounds different. I have to go back and double check myself. The first thing I'll say about the 45 RPM is that when you drop the needle on this thing and those first seconds come out of the speaker, the sense I get is like a sense of confidence that wow, this is how this record is supposed to sound. Like I don't feel, as I'm going through and I'm listening to from track one to track two, I'm just really conscious of this is the best this record's ever gonna sound. Like I just feel like if I, ha if I had just this and I was okay with flipping the record over three times, that this is it, you're on top of the hill. You're, 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 you're king of the hill with this thing. I mean, it just, it's gonna sound Fantastic. It sounds fantastic. Um, it, any of the limitations in this are, I'm confident in saying that it's in the recording. It's in the it's on the original tape because it's just, when you have all the music spread across four sides and you've got, go, and you're going 45 RPM and getting all that act, additional information, it just, it sounds phenomenal. It sounds phenomenal. It sounds great. All right, so then last I listened to the Japanese pressing. Um, this is probably the one that sounds most closest to the original. I mean, it's a 1977. And, but believe it or not, there's a little more bottom end on the Japanese pressing even, more than say the 66 US pressing. Other than that, I mean, it's very similar dynamics across the whole spectrum with the Japanese pressing. There's not as much detail in the top end as there is on the original. There's just a little more bottom end. And so it's a very, very, I mean, again, this is the one that I've had for years. It, it's a fantastic pressing. Um, it's a fantastic pressing. And even after comparing it to all the um, it's just it's just a great pressing. Uh, so I even made a note. Oh, so yeah, on the 45 RPM on the last track on the record, which again is going to be closest to the inner groove for all the other 33 RPMs, is just very impressive. It's just so good. I mean, sonically, the bass, the vibes, Freddie's trumpet. There's a lot of playing where Eric and Freddie play, you know, in unison together, and it's just. Man, it's so, so clean and so groovy. I mean, again, we're getting back into the music part, but all of that, that great musicianship gets a chance to shine on this 45 RPM. The one thing too about the 45 is that it seems like it's the one that is qu quietest amplitude wise. Like it's, I had to turn the volume up a little bit to meet the same uh, loudness as the other album. So. That's another way of getting back some of that fidelity in the grooves, right? Is that like when on records that are recorded very loud, that's gonna create a bigger frequency signature in the groove. And so having the volume be a little lower on this one, I, I mean, I feel like it's just another way that they're trying to add as much fidelity into those grooves as possible. All right, so I mean, overall, what did I learn here? Um, I know I've talked a lot about the 45 RPM. It's just, it's very difficult to say anything bad about it. That That's kind of the thing, right? It's, it feels like 
with each of the other albums, maybe there was, you know, with the US pressing, like I said, they're just not as much bottom end, but then there was a lot of detail in the top end. Um, the Japanese pressing adds a little bit of that, of that bottom end, and again, sounds fantastic, but maybe missing some of those details. Um, the big surprise here for me, I think, is the classic series. And maybe I haven't talked enough about the classic series, but there are times where you can put the classic series on against the 45 RPM and not know that you're listening to a different record. The classic series is the most impressive. It's recorded on 33 RPM. It's a $30 record, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's a $30 record. This, you expect it to sound fantastic, right? It's 45 RPM, it's two LPs, it's Music Matters, it's, you know, 125, 150, $200 pressing. You expect this to sound as great as it does. It's phenomenal. This one is shocking. It's so damn good. It's so good. Um, <laughs> If the 45 beats it out, it is not by much. Now look, of course the 45 is gonna have more information. It deals with a lot of the limitations that I spoke about before, it just does. Having said that, this squeezes as much into a 33 RPM as I can possibly imagine. Comparing this to this was shocking, unbelievable unbelievable really was form factor and packaging wise yes you get this little sticker that makes you feel i don't know it, it's not as sexy as maybe that sticker is that sticker is way sexier right um you know you got the paper sleeve of course it does have the poly liner which is fantastic it's not a gatefold which is fine with me but i mean you know this isn't the best jacket that i've ever seen on the planet when you get this, like, you know you're holding something substantial. You get a fantastic gatefold. You get, you know, much like the Tone Poets series, you're gonna get a lot of these session photos. Um, it's on nice, glossy, tip-on jacket. You know, I mean, it's, it's high quality, depending on what you think about the gatefold portion of it being so dramatically different from say an original. Presentation-wise, it's nice. You feel like you're getting something for your money. But that sexiness can be a little, can cloud your mind a little bit. At least it can cloud mine. When I got this thing, I actually bought a second uh, 45 RPM Music Matters record, and it's, it's just as beautiful. It sounds just as great. But man, for not being sexy, this thing sounds pretty damn sexy. It's nice having an original, right? I mean, I get it. I get the fun and the mystique that comes with it, right? You know, you've got, this has now become a little more cream colored and there's, you know, a little bit of foxing going on, which, you know, just adds to the age of it, right? Um, somebody wrote on this thing way back in, you know, 1970 and, you know, you feel like you're holding something historical. This is in very good condition. It'd be very difficult for me to part with this because this is my, my favorite album and it sounds great. It sounds great knowing that you're closer to the original tapes, but if I'm being objective here and if I'm being fair, I have to take it for what it is. Um, and the next thing, of course, the 77 Japanese pressing, you get the cool insert, you know, you're, this would have an Obi strip on it. I don't have the Obi strip for it. Sounds killer, sounds fantastic. The truth is, if you have any of these pressings, you're doing great. They all sound really, really good. If you need a little more, you know, bass in some of these older pressings, then, you know, you can turn your bass knob a little bit. Um, some of that bass is gonna be built into these more recent pressings. The 45 is gonna be the star of the show, it is, but I can't, I'm not gonna sit here and say that this is the one to go get because it's so expensive, you know? You, you're, you're sacrificing cost for quality in that situation. You're getting what you pay for, of course, but with this, you're getting so much value for this record. It's, if, if the 45 RPM is 150 bucks, we'll just call it 150 bucks, and this is 30 bucks, I'm gonna go out and get five more classic series to add to my collection because I think the average person 
and the uh, whatever, the collector, the lover of this stuff is gonna do great with this. But I think there are people out there that are all original all the time, all high-end audio file pressing all the time. And, but I'm, I mean, I'm just impressed just from a sound perspective, just from a Sonics perspective. I can't hype this one enough. It's so good. I, I know I'm not given the, um, the 66 and the 77, the love that they probably deserve. What I wish is that we could make a hybrid and take some of that detail in the top end that we get from that 66 pressing and just kind of apply it to these uh, these later pressings that have a lot of that great bottom end. Did we learn something? I feel like we did. I feel like I'm surprised. I think I was expecting the 45, to be honest with you, or the original to like completely blow away all the other records. And that's just not what happened for me. This is very subjective. Obviously, I'm giving you my opinion. There are gonna be some people that prefer the sound of an original or that 66 pressing. There's gonna be people that prefer the sound of a Japanese pressing. There's gonna be people that prefer the 45 RPM. And so all I really wanted to do was try to come in here and compare them, tell you what I'm hearing, and then just give you my opinion. Um, again, I would feel confident with any of these, but being that this is far cheaper than every other record on this list, wow, wow. It really makes me feel confident with all of the classic series that I do have in my collection, you know, that I don't have to go out and get a 45 RPM of them to think like, oh, it's gonna sound so much better or that I have to get an original. Be the collector that you are. You know, if you're someone that likes buying originals because they're cool, there is some mystique about it and there's a history injected into these things um, and that brings you joy, boom, do that. If you're someone that wants to have gate folds all along your, you know, your record shelves and you got to have every tone poet and you got to have all the music matters and you got to have all the UHQRs and all that stuff. Boom. Do that. Every record is different. Every pressing is different. Um, I'm really, it's a very much a general statement to say that, you know, that every uh, classic vinyl series is going to stand up to every other pressing for that same album. But, I'm very, very happy with how the classic series held up in this situation. I don't know what else there is to say here. I am going live this Thursday. How about that? I'm going live this Thursday. Not only am I going live this Thursday, Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, with some great folks. I'm going live with Chance from Concert Buddy, Felipe, who you will see oftentimes on the Jazz Bums channel. Also gonna have Jason Rojas, and Arnaldo, who often appear on um, Chance's stream every other week. So yeah, I would love to have you join. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a giveaway for that stream. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something here. I certainly did. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Please consider liking. Please give me your thoughts down below. Am I a nut for thinking this? Are you someone that's, you know, die hard into these originals and they sound better than every other pressing? Or, is there no way in your mind that this classic series even held a candle to this Music Matters 45 RPM? Whatever it is, I wanna hear it. Let's get down in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.